Hi guys, I'm Darren and this video is the first video in our Beginners to iNav build series. So a few of you guys have reached out to me and asked me to make a series for building a plane with iNav. So this video marks the first episode in that series. I don't know how long the series is going to be yet, but we're basically going to take it from absolutely nothing at all to a fully built plane ready to fly. And this is really going to be aimed at people who have not done this at all before. So we're going to take it nice and slow just so that you can see how things go together. Now, like with all my videos, if I do go over something a little bit too quickly or in a bit too much depth please feel free to ask a question in the comments and I'll get back to you in there or if I feel like it could be uh, broken down or put in a separate video I will do that as well but please be mindful that this could be quite a way in the future so if you are answer a question in a comment it might be a little while before a video comes out discussing that so in this first video we're basically going to look at the components that i've chosen for this series and i'm going to explain a bit about why i've chosen them also some alternatives because at the moment there is a chip shortage problem which means that by the time this video comes out one of the components i've suggested may not necessarily be available in fact i ordered a flight controller for this series and pretty soon after it became end of life what i'm going to do is actually use a different flight controller but we will cover how to get it connected to all different flight controllers so what plane have i chosen to do this series with this one the atomasi dolphin so why have i chosen the dolphin well there are a couple of reasons and I think one of the main ones is the flight characteristics and also that it's not actually too too bad to launch. A lot of people who come into the fixed wing FPV, some might be from quads uh, but others are completely with no experience whatsoever but either way launching a plane is something completely new and a lot of people who do try to come into a, a fixed wing FPV sort of gravitate towards flying wings. Uh, you know, they look a bit cooler um, and people just don't really want to use the planes with a tail, even though, you know, they're going to be easier to learn with. So I've gone for the Dolphin and the reason for that is it's a little bit easier to have launched than a flying wing. It's actually got grips on there and if you give it a good throw, even with a PNP setup, you can get in the air quite nicely. But also it has excellent flight characteristics it's a forward swept wing so it tends not to tip stall at all in fact you can fly this thing very slowly just yesterday my friend was flying his at 20 miles an hour no problem whatsoever but likewise if you feel like later on you want to get into a, something a bit more exciting you can put a big motor on this and it will do you know quite quick speeds i was actually chatting to someone earlier today They've got theirs up to 140 miles an hour, but after that, you do need to sort of do laminating or maybe balsa uh, elevons just to get a bit more stiffness in the wings. But this plane has got a very wide envelope for how you want to fly. It can do slow, it can do fast, it can do long range, it can do just proximity cruising. It's quite nice for aerobatics. It doesn't necessarily excel for each specific area. You could probably find something that does it better, but as an all rounder, it is a fantastic plane and it does fly very, very nicely. So what have I gone for? I've actually gone for a kit version and I'm choosing my own components, but the plug and play version is absolutely fine. If you wanted to get the plug and play, um, we can still follow on with this series it's just your components will be slightly different and you've got a little bit less to build i actually made into my friend's dolphin for him as a plug and play about a month or so ago and other than needing full throttle and a nice decent throw and it will get in the air quite nicely getting it in the air is a little bit tricky but that motor and prop combination is actually very efficient so you'll get really nice flight times out of that but what i've gone is for something a little bit bigger so a slightly bigger motor slightly higher kv so that should make launching a little bit easier but we'll see once this one actually gets built since i've made in my friend's plane he's actually gone to an even bigger motor than what i've gone for and it launches absolutely no problem now because of this the flight time has reduced slightly but it's all a balancing act. Once I've flown this, we'll actually see how good this setup is, but I'm gonna let you know the components that I've chosen. But first, let's get this out of the box and take a look at the Dolphin. Right, so here we have the Atomar C Dolphin. It is yeah, pretty nicely packaged. There's no damage to the box at all. I did order this from Hobby RC in the UK. I'm in the UK, so it's all domestic delivery. Um, 
but you can order these from either local places in your country or the sort of Chinese places like Banggood or AliExpress. I will put a link up to the international places uh, in the video description so you can check those out yourself. But let's take a quick look. So this fuselage was in <laughs> this bubble wrap. I've had it out before. Um, so let's take a look at what we get in the bag. So we get our tail section, which we need to glue in. So one thing I will go over in a sec is some basic tools that we'll need to build this thing. Even if you get the plug and play, you'll need to glue these in. Uh, but it's, it's quite simple. We'll go through that in another video. But these are our vertical stabilizers and they just glue into these slots here. Now we have our wings. So these are pretty nice wings. They got a little bit of plastic reinforcement on the front or is it just vinyl? It might be thin plastic or vinyl. They're reasonably stiff. There's a CG mark. It's pretty critical you get CG right on planes. So if you're coming from quads or, or if you're new, you won't know about uh, the center of gravity that you need to get, get right. Um, you can see in the back here we have a carbon spar running through. There's a slot here which is where our main spar goes in. And it looks like there may even be a smaller spar that goes in the back. These wings are designed to be removable. So there's a little screw in there so we can attach a thumb screw. And the servo wire will just go through and poke through that hole there and then into the fuselage. So if you did need to break this down for travel, even with the motor on it, it might fit in this box. But uh, you can take the wings off. Actually, it won't fit in the box because of the vertical stabilizers. But you can take the wings off to make it a little bit easier to transport. Now, the, uh, the control surfaces on this aircraft are called elevons. And the reason for that is they operate as both an elevator and a aileron. So it controls both pitch and roll. And yeah, everything looks pretty straight. There's a carbon rod through here to give strength to the elevon. And there's actually dual, um, they look like carbon fiber, uh, control horns. So uh, it actually gives you a bit more stiffness in the control horn itself. So all you need to do is just make sure that this is glued in nicely. If it's not, just we'll apply some glue, put some pins through to hold it in place. But this one's actually fine. Same with the wood, just make sure it's all glued in nicely. Of course, the other wing is exactly the same. It's just the other way around. So again, we're just checking that the carbon is in there nicely and that all the wood is glued on. So, yep, yeah, all good here. So next up, we have this nose cone that can clip on the front. At the moment, there is a blunt nose cone in the fuselage, which has got a hole cut in it for a GoPro 5 to 7. Or you can put this nose on here, which is a little bit more aerodynamic. There is a hole in the front of this to put an FPV camera, which would probably have to be a nano sized camera looking at that. But how you'd actually get in there to put the camera in, I, could, you know, I can't get my fingers to the bottom of it. So getting the cable in, attaching the cable and then pushing the camera forward would not be an easy task. Probably you'd have to use a stick or something and then have a connector for the cable up here. I don't know whether I'm going to use this nose yet or whether I'm going to use the blunt nose. Uh, I may use the blunt nose and put my peanut action camera in there. But it's actually very neat. If you do have a GoPro, like a, a Series 5 to 7, it will fit in there perfectly. There's a little strap that goes around these hooks, but there's a hole in the top so you can act, you know, press the stop and start button. <laughs> this, it's really nicely thought out. And that's the thing with this plane. It is nicely thought out. So there's the, the flat nose for the GoPro. The magnets aren't brilliant. You can see it's just wobbling a bit loose there. So it's probably worth putting a little bit of tape around it just to hold that nose on. So we get a spec sheet. So we'll take a look at this. We've just got the overall dimensions of the plane. Something to say to get the CG right. So there's a slight upward sweep in the wing. So that will help with self-leveling. So this is saying about the the changeable nose and it's saying if you put a gopro in you can slide the rear battery holder backwards or forwards to adjust the cg so 
what do we get on the specs we've just got the wingspan length wing area weight i guess that's just the dry weight of all the foam before anything goes in recommended motor of a 2306 uh, recommended ESCs. that's obviously to go with the recommended motor two nine gram servos and a five to six inch propeller recommended battery 4s 1300 to 2200 well I know for a fact you can fly with a lot more battery than 2200 on this. In fact, my friend was flying with 6,000 milliamp hours the other day and the plane absolutely handled it fine. There's information that is not present in this manual and unfortunately it's a thing that comes with most FPV planes. There's no control surface froze, which is pretty essential when you're setting up the plane and something that we will look at so that when you throw your plane it's not going to go wildly out of control. But yes, yeah, it's got the CG, which is one essential thing, but there's no control surface throws, which is another, which they really should include in the manual. But it's not just Atom RC that are, are guilty of this. A lot of companies also do this, and other companies have throws, but they have admitted to me that they're just guesses. So uh, what we'll probably do is set this up with a sort of standard 12 millimeters and see where we go from there. So we get some stickers that we can put on the plane and we finally get the carbon spar okay so the one of the other reasons i chose this plane is there's absolutely buckets of room in here so this is the rear bay where you can put your flight controller there's already some standoffs put in for a 30 30 stack and a 20 20 stack it's may or may not be a good idea to use these uh the one thing that has been pointed out before is if you put something on this stack you can't actually get to that thumb screw which is the wing attachment so if you want removable screws yeah th this is no good but also i think i would have preferred it if these were just loose in a bag and you could glue them in yourself so that way if you don't want to use these they're not you don't have to try and get them out this is the rear battery tray which you can loosen off these two bolts and it will slide forwards and backwards now if we line up a wing I believe it's pretty pretty close to being on CG so our CG mark is there it's just forwards of that wing it's, it's probably right there at the ring wing root so actually no it's slightly rearwards of CG but it gives you a lot more options you can put a battery in here and just fine-tune the CG the main battery will go in the nose but obviously you could run two batteries in parallel that's not a problem i'll explain more about that when we get onto the battery section i may be saying stuff at the moment that is, is new to you but basically what it means is if we have the same amount of cells we can join the two batteries together and combine the capacity of the batteries but i'll explain that later on so let's take a look in the front hatch so this little piece here is just a blanking plate for there if you don't use this camera mounting position this little bit of foam here i would just cut out it just gets in the way to be honest and half the time it just breaks off anyway so even though this is the kit we actually get some control rods so we have some rods the screws and the ball joints so ball joints like this are brilliant they work really nicely and if a control linkage isn't exactly square it just compensates for that a little bit but we have everything here that we need for the wing side of the control surface movement we're only missing the servos of course if you bought the plug and play you will get servos with it so we have a little bag of uh, little screws so these are the same types of screws in here so maybe they're even just spares we have the nuts to go on top of these if we use them and uh, get some other little screws as well and some wood type screws so uh, well thought out we get two battery straps because obviously we can put one at the front and one at the back this bag i quite like the idea of if you've noticed there's a little hole here and that is for an antenna so you you've got a, a board in there some extension wire and some carbon parts so i don't really know what the carbon parts are for must be for something else but the, the little plywood board actually goes up in there as a support so you then have your right angled antenna hole sticking out here so you can just screw your video 
antenna into that. So yeah, I mean, unfortunately we've seen the manual, so there's nothing about these uh, carbon, <laughs> carbon little plates in the manual, but I'm sure we'll find out what they're for when we're building. Maybe it's something to do with a wing attachment. And this is our final little bag. So yeah, we do get a couple more carbon spars to go in the back. So they will go in there before we put the wing on, which is nice. They don't go all the way through, but they're enough to give the wing some support. Obviously the main spar goes all the way through, but what that means is we've only got a little bit here where the spar goes through, but this whole area here is empty so we can use it for what we like. These are the bolts for the wing attachment, so they go through there, but as you can see, they're already touching these little nylon screws. So if you put anything on there at all, forget having removable wings. And obviously the wing needs to go on and stay on before you actually put anything on there. This little plate here is the ESC cover, so that will screw into there, which are obviously the little wood screws are for. We have a wooden motor mount, so you would screw your motor to that, put it in there and then screw that plate onto the other plate that's already in there. Now I've seen 3D printed options for that, which may give you a bit more strength. And the last thing we get is an elastic band or two elastic bands. And they are to go around these little hooks to hold your GoPro in. So you'd hook it around the top or, and then hook it around the bottom. So that is our Atom RC Dolphin kit. As you can see, it's quite comprehensive. If you get the PNP version, you will also get the motor, the ESC, the two servos, and the propeller for the motor. And I believe there's also an FPV version that comes with a Foxeer Razor FPV camera and a, a VTX of some kind. What I'm gonna do now is put this to the side and we'll go over the components that I'm gonna be using with this kit and this with this build. Okay, so we have our Dolphin, but if we bought the kit version, we will need a couple of extra components to actually get this flying and get it up to the PMP level before we even start thinking about flight controllers. So what we'll do is take a quick look at the equipment that I've chosen. Now I've actually sort of written a web page, which I'm gonna put a few different options in there. So I may be talking about different brands to what I'm showing you here, but it's all on that web page, and I'll put a link in the video description. So let's have a look at the components that I'm using for this build. Right, so first up, let's go from the wings. We have our control surfaces here, but we need something to actually control them. And that is where servos come in. So if you ask in a group, you'll most likely hear use Emacs servos. And most of the time I'm absolutely fine with that. They are brilliant servos, but for this build, I'm gonna try something different. And I know that these JX servos are pretty decent too. So what I've actually gone for is JX PDI 1109 Metal Gear servos. Now, the reason I went for these is because they actually sort of sit halfway between the ES08 MD servos and the ES09 MD servos. They've got the same speed, but slightly more torque than the 08s, but slightly less than the 09s. And likewise, they're sort of priced in the middle as well. So they're actually listed as 10 gram servos. If it says nine gram servos, there's a, a few different weights that it can actually be. It's more of a physical size of the servo we're worried about. So this for comparison is an Emacs ES08 MD2 actually. So this is sort of the usual metal geared digital servo I'd use. And this is listed as 12 or 13 grams. But as you can see, if I put it in the slot, it fits exactly. So actually that's a really good choice for this plane if you want something simple. Now these, as I mentioned, these servos have got a little bit more torque, but the other thing that I, I quite like is for digital servos, they can operate at a faster speed. These ones actually say 330 Hertz, whereas Emacs don't actually specify. I'm pretty sure they'll run at 330 Hertz, I've, but uh, actually having it listed is, is quite handy. So let's take a look at the size comparison because Emacs are usually a little bit more shallow than other brands of servo. It's about the same, but you'll find some nine gram servos are slightly longer, even though they're the same sort of spec. So let's try that in here. 
Actually, it is slightly bigger because the foam is a little bit tighter to push it into, but you see it will go. But yeah, I've, these are the servos I'll be using on this build. But if you wanted to go for Emacs, then the ES08 MD2 is absolutely fine and they will do the job. So we can control our plane, but we at the moment aren't going anywhere. So what we need is a motor. So I have gone for this, which is the KO Demon Seed motor. Now this is 2208, so it's slightly bigger than the recommended size of 2306. And it is 50 kV higher than the, the plug and play. So it's, it's not a lot bigger, but it should hopefully give it that little bit of a boost on launch, but will still hopefully keep the efficiency for the, the flight time. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. KO actually makes some cracking motors, so I've got no problems with this going wrong at all. I think it'll be an absolute great motor, but also how cool does that look? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very cool looking motor. Yeah, this can use the cryo system, which I believe is like a spray to make this thing run cooler. It being KO, all the magnets, bearings and everything is going to be top quality. And it's still a reasonably priced motor as well. So looking forward to trying this motor out. But of course, the motor is no good without an ESC. And what the ESC does is take the input from the flight controller in this case and then sends the power to the motor in the free phase. So I've gone for the Hollybro Teco 32 uh, F4 45 amp ESC. So this type of ESC they generally call quad ESCs but I guess opto ESC would be a better explanation. Basically it's an ESC it's got no uh, beck on it but you can see it's pretty naked. Compared to a traditional plane ESC like this uh, where you've got a heat sink inside, you have capacitors in there, you ha also have a 5 amp beck. But you can see this is a 30 amp, this is a 45 amp, and you can see the size difference. But this is why I always run a higher powered quad style ESC in a plane. The these things are designed to run at higher output for longer in an enclosed space, whereas quads the ESCs are under the propellers and they're getting cool air all the time so always over spec with an ESC of this type and I will also be putting a capacitor on it. They actually provide quite a bit in this kit there's the two main power wires which go onto here and then three other wires here which one's going to be signal one will be telemetry I guess yep but you can see this thing comes with telemetry there's a shunt resistor there for actually measuring the current there's probably going to be onboard stuff for uh, temperature sensing as well and also it will send back the rpm so quite a nice esc this and just you can see there's nice thick traces all over it so it's it is going to do quite well i believe but that's the esc i'm going for also yeah you also get a bit of heat shrink but you you do get a capacitor so this is a 330 microfarad 35 volt so that is the esc that i'm using for this build and again on the website i've put a couple of different options um, they're all quad escs the minimum size is 45 amp so even if we're using a motor that's only going to be drawing 20 uh, 30 amps there's going to be a nice amount of overhead and they all will fit in that little hole as well so there we go so now what we have is our controller for the motor we have our servos so as far as the pmp stuff goes we're pretty much there the only thing that i've forgotten to mention is the propeller so for the propeller i'm going to be using this apc 6x4 matched up to this motor with propellers it's not really just a case of just sticking a certain size on if you're with you know flying multi-rotors you're probably used to just saying right i want to put five inch props on and you just put any five inch props on and that's that's good what you really need to do with fixed wing is ideally match the prop to the flight characteristics of the plane and then match the motor to the prop. Um, I know I wanted to use this size motor 
Um, so and this prop will actually be fine. I, I believe I was speaking to Christopher at KO and he was saying that he runs a nano drag with this motor and prop combination and it works absolutely perfectly. So that's what I'm going for. So this silver part here is actually a spacer. Um, I just ordered this off of eBay. I believe it was a three millimeter spacer. Um, but the reason for running that is you can see on this prop that the shoulders are pretty high. And if you're running motors designed for multi-rotors, obviously on a multi-rotor, this side of the prop is what sits on the motor and you just have a nut here. But on a fixed wing, if it's a pusher, the motor is actually this side. So these bulges actually contact the bell of the motor. And in extreme cases, you'll have a gap in between the, the plate that's supposed to be touching the motor and the motor itself. So this spacer is basically just to take up that gap. But I will go into a bit more detail with that on the build. Um, and I've covered it a little bit on the website as well. Right, so now we have our complete propulsion system. We also have our control. Now we're up to the PMP. So what we need to do now is look at how we can control the plane in flight because at the moment we've not really got anything to do with that. So the first thing that we need is a control system. I'm in a sort of lucky situation where I can use either R9 or Crossfire. So for the build, I'm actually gonna be using R9, but in the video, I will be showing how to attach both R9 and Crossfire. So I'll be using this R9 MX receiver. So this is a really simple, really small receiver. You can see it's pretty tiny. It's a similar size to the Crossfire Nano and they're both using sort of T-style antennas. Again, I'll go over the whole antenna orientation thing when we actually fit this in the plane. But yeah, it's just a very simple receiver. Um, all we need is the UART and power. We don't need any sort of servo stuff on this at all. If you're running Express LRS, it will basically be exactly the same as the Crossfire setup because to communicate with the flight controller, Express LRS is using Crossfire. But either way, you will have a control link. So once we have a control link, that then talks to a flight controller. And this is where things are getting a little bit tricky at the minute. This flight controller here, the F405 WSE, is what I actually bought to do this build. And the reason I bought this is because out of all the flight controllers I would go for, this is the cheapest. There are F411s, but personally, I would avoid them. With this model, there's plenty of room. The only, the only reason I'd go for an F411 is space limitation. Everything else they just fall far behind on the power side, the number of UARTs, the F405 size and up are just better flight controllers and give you more options. So I was going to use this Matek F405 WSE, then it went end of life. So that left me a little bit of a dilemma. I also have this F765 WSE, which I actually bought for another build. So I could use that or I needed another flight controller. This had gone end of line, but the replacement is more expensive than this flight controller here, which is the H743 wing version three, which is like the top end flight controller at the moment. So it's, I'm not gonna buy an F405 when I can get the H743 for less. So the dilemma is which flight controller to use in the plane. Now, at the end of the day, they will all do the same job and at the end of the day, the way that we can connect them up is basically the same. With the F405, there is a slight difference when it comes to some receivers, but we can cover that in the video when we connect the receivers up. But the rest of it is exactly the same. Right, so we have our flight controller. So we're getting closer to having everything we need. With our flight controller, we do want to use navigation functions. So we need a GPS module. Now I'm just using a TBS M82. I've used one of these before, not really had any problems with it. Some people have, again, on the website, I've got alternatives, but it's a reasonable cheap GPS. Right, so we have our control system, our power, our way of turning the plane. We have our flight controller, which will actually control all this. This will talk to the flight controller. We have our GPS sensor, which will tell us where we are so we can navigate, but we can't see yet, can we? So what we need is an FPV camera. Now, again, this is something where I, 
I've put a few different options on the website. At the moment, there are two main ways you can go with FPV. There is analog, which has been used for quite a while now, and there is digital. Digital is a lot more expensive. Some people try to claim that it's not by using the most expensive analog stuff that you can get and comparing that. But if you're using sort of decent quality average stuff, it's about half the price of digital. There's no real getting around that. But also digital has other disadvantages too. On the website, I've done a whole section on that and a comparison table. So basically it's up to you to decide whether you want to go digital or analog. At this point in time, if I was going digital, I would probably be swayed more towards HD zero just because I can see a lot more potential in the future. Where it's going open source, I can see that just getting better and better and better. Whereas the other sort of DJI Shark, yeah, Fat Shark D DJI system is going to be closed source and what it is is what you get. It's up to you to decide, but for this build, I am using analog because I just don't think there's a problem using analog at all anyway. So this camera that I've got here is actually what comes with the, the uh, PMP FPV version, I believe. This is a Foxy Razer Micro. Now these are very cheap cameras. There's about £12. I've got the price comparisons on my website, but I've got the mini version in my mini AR wing and the quality I really can't tell any difference in quality to my original Predator cameras which were 35 or 30 pound cameras so the actual sensor and technology is fine I think obviously it's not the best of the best but for getting basic flights in it's quite fine and this one here it's a micro camera so that slot there is basically made for micro cameras it would obviously need a little bit cut out of the nose if you're going to use that nose. Um, but yeah, it's that's micro size camera is what you need for up in there. FPV cameras are pretty straightforward. For most of them what, with a flight controller, all we need is a video output ground and uh, power in. That's all you really need to set up. This side here is for the little control pad which you get in the box. So you can turn off um, their OSD settings if they have any or adjust the, you know, the picture. But um, that's that's the most basic option. If you wanted something a little bit uh, better, then there is the Cadex Rattel 2, which I use on quite a few planes, or I've used the original Rattel and the Rattel 2. These are micro size cameras also. Again, that will just fit in that slot with a little bit of persuasion. This camera is about twice the price of the fox here but it's still only around sort of 25 pounds it's not an expensive camera um not where you can get 40 pound analog cameras when you're getting to that sort of price if you buy the top end then you are getting closer to the digital money it's still cheaper but you are getting closer and again this is just a simple three pin plug with your video out your ground and your power but yeah, that is a better quality camera and the Rattel 2 has got a DJI lens with it. I wonder why. Uh, but anyway, so that's the Rattel. If you did want to get something up in here, you need to look at smaller cameras, which is a nano camera. And you can see sort of the size difference of the two. And would you believe they both have the same sensor? These have both got the same one and one eighth inch sensor, but this is the sort of camera that you're going to want if you want to put one up in the nose. That's that's the size for it. Again, it's just power ground video out and a remote. But actually, <laughs> the lens size on this will be massive in that hole. But when you look at the square at the end, I think that is the right size for it. Let's drop it in. Yeah, so that's just in that square. But yeah, the lens is sort of floating about in there. But that's the sort of size that you all need to get a nano camera. So we have our camera. There's one more thing we need, and that is a VTX. So I will be using an AKK X2 Ultimate just because I've used these a lot and they work pretty well. So these are pretty simple uh, VTXs. They have an MMCX connector, which is a nice snug pushing connector. And all we're going to be using is smart audio, uh, ground 
and the input voltage and the video feed. That's all we really need for these. Um, then we'll be able to change the power output from inside the plane. One thing that I have forgotten about is the video antenna. So um, I will sort one of those out obviously before we get on with the videos, but there's quite a lot of choice for that. Okay, so there are components that we're gonna be using in this build. Obviously if we're using PMP, then they're fine too. Or if you wanna use different components, that's absolutely fine. The way these are all gonna connect is gonna be the same basically. So you can still follow along with the video. What we will need is a couple of basic tools. So you will need a soldering iron. So if you haven't used one of these before or are uncomfortable using it, I would probably get some practice boards and just practice soldering rather than doing it straight on these flight controllers. I will be showing how I do it in the video, but getting some practice in is helpful. The other thing that we're gonna need is some glue. These are the two popular brands here. I will probably be using Yoohoo Pour for connecting or gluing those in. E6000 works pretty well too. I tend to use Pour more for foam on foam, E6000 for other materials attaching to the foam. But get yourself some of these. If you get Yoohoo, make sure it is the Pour version though. Other than that, we're just gonna need some sort of basic small screwdrivers. So you won't be really using anything over a Phillips head one. That will probably be the bigger. So if you've got a double zero, a zero and a one, that would be a good start. Other things, obviously you'll need some solder. Flux is very good for getting decent solder joints. Some Allen keys. I don't actually know what size is in this plane, but get a selection of small Allen keys something to do up a prop so a prop spanner like this or a eight mil spanner some little snips for cable i'd recommend getting some knives if we need to cut foam a retractable sort of craft knife like this is pretty handy for big bits of cutting or a scalpel like this which you can get these on these handles on ebay and i think these are 10a blades but make sure you get plenty of blades because if you're cutting foam, you want it to be sharp. Tweezers, these things are really useful. These are actually sort of closed. You push them into open and then when you let go, it closes. They are, have come in so useful. Um, again, you'd probably be able to find something like that on eBay. Desoldering wick, just in case you make a mistake, that will suck solder off of the pads so you can start nice and clean and fresh silicon wire so this is what i use for sort of connecting the gps for example to the flight controller or a vtx or fpv camera so this is 28 american wire gauge this stuff you can get on amazon it's quite cheap i think it's about 13 14 pound for the six reels uh each each spool is 13 meters yeah i, I mean i'm using 28 for internal but for other stuff, obviously we'll need thicker. This motor cable should be long enough to reach inside. The, the cable we got with the ESC will be long enough to reach inside. But if you haven't got that sort of cable, mainly the stuff to go from the ESC, we'll also need power cable. So some American wire gauge 14 or 16 will be fine for getting from the battery to the flight controller. Probably 14 would be better. Heat shrink. Obviously, if we're making joins in cable, heat shrink is needed. And if you've got heat shrink, you need something to shrink it down with. So a heat gun or a hairdryer, something like that. A multimeter is a very useful tool. We can use that for testing voltages on things, making sure we've got continuity between things. So that is useful. And also some sort of smoke stopper. What this does is go in between the main battery and the flight controller. So the first time we plug it in, if there are any shorts, this thing goes, not the flight controller. So it's a really useful safety device for our first power ons. The other thing that may come in handy is Blenderm tape. This stuff is really good for sticking things to foam. So I use this for my cable routings, that sort of thing. So I can stick them to the side of the foam, uh, just tidies the build up. So yeah, Blenderm tape is good. So all that there is what we need to get our build started. We have our kit, we have the components to go in it, and we have our tools, wire, that sort of thing to actually start putting it together. So in the next video, that's what we're gonna start doing. We'll get the basic plane built up, 
So we'll have fuselage together, stuff glued on, servos installed, uh, motor on, ESC in, and that will get us in a good position to start where we can think about laying out our flight controller and our other components like the VTX, receiver and GPS. So that will be the next video. We'll start putting this thing together. We won't be putting the flight controller in in the next video. That will come in probably the, the video after that because we'll be starting to set up INAV. So I'm going to be using INAV 5. So before I can actually do the flight controller video, I'm waiting for the stable release to come out, which will be sort of the end of June. Um, I'm at the beginning of June now, RC2 came out about two days ago. So we're pretty much in a good position. So the idea is I get this built to get that next video done before INAV 5 is released. Then when, when INAV 5 comes out, we'll get the flight controller set up because there is stuff that we do to the flight controller before we even put it in the plane. It makes life easier. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And this is a series, so click that subscribe button and the bell icon and you'll get alerts for when the next episode comes out. It will also help more people to find this video too. So hopefully this series will make it easier for you to get into the hobby using more modern equipment so looking forward to you guys joining me on the next video thank you very much for watching flow models like you stole them see you on the next one